Trinidad and Tobago, this is a call to pray. 21 days of outpouring and revival has come. It is the gathering of the brands plucked out of the fire. It is the gathering of the burning ones. It is the gathering of the messengers of truth. Sons and daughters that carry revival fires shut up in their bones, incubated in the bellies of God. A great global outpouring and revival has come to the land. The altar of prayer overrides curses and dismantles strongholds. The altar of prayer exposes satanic covenants and concentrations. The altar of prayer is the place of manifestation of power and prosperity. I invite you to gather with us for 21 days at the altar of prayer. The lion of the tribe of Judah is awakening sleeping families. The 
Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? The truth is this generation knows less about the coming of the Lord than any past generation. This generation is least expectant of the coming of the Lord. It is seldom preached in American pulpits. It's seldom preached anywhere on the face of the earth today that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. See, we've settled in a comfortable lifestyle. We are living in the most profitable time in the history of the world, they tell us now. And the coming of the Lord would be very disruptive for many people of their good life. I've heard Christians literally mock the message of the any time return to the Lord Jesus Christ. Literally mock it. Peter said if in the last days mockers will come with their mockings falling after their own lust and saying, where is the sign of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue just as they were from the beginning of creation. But the day of the Lord will come, Peter said, as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. But now, folks, the cry, I believe, is going to be heard more and more in the true church of Jesus Christ. The Lord is coming. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Get prepared. He's telling us that just like in Noah's time and Lot's time, they're going to ignore the call. He said, if you want to see the sign, oh, you look around, see how my message is being ignored. Just look at the, uh, the stupor and the hearts and the minds and the blindness of the people. You want a sign? That's your sign. Just as in Noah and just as then, it was that premeditated turning off of the message of Noah. The premeditated turning off of the testimony of Lot, a righteous man in the midst of that city. And the premeditated warning of angels just before the moment came. And now we have that premeditated rejection. Folks, I know in my heart that the majority of Christians today that have turned off this message at one time had it burning in their heart that Jesus was coming. And they have turned it off. Absolutely turned it off. And some of you sitting in this church this morning, you have totally turned off this idea of his coming. And you bought into a doctrine that is thousands of years away. I'm going to ask you again. Are you really ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you sure you're fully prepared for that moment that he comes suddenly? There's some things here that we need to look at very seriously that the Lord makes very, very clear to us. Matthew 24 again. Jesus comes forth with a description now of those who are truly prepared with this awful warning. Verse 44, there be also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. That ruler of the household, when we talk about this, Paul talked about the household of faith. He was first talking to pastors who are rulers, the scripture said, over the household of faith. That's pastors who have a congregation. He said, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a ruler over a household of God under his authority. As a parent, you are a ruler over your household. Every father in this house, you have been mandated by God to be a ruler of your household. Every single mother, there's no father in your house. You have been appointed. You have been made ruler of your house. There's no one else. It's you. The children. You're responsible. And the Lord's talking about his coming now. And he said, I'm going to bless those rulers, those parents, those mothers, those fathers who give their children meat in due season. Meat is the word of God. It is the Holy Bible. It is the truth. The due season is before they get hardened in the right time when it's still effective, when they're still tender. The Lord said, 
And I tell you, the Lord is so concerned about this that he said, if you'll do this, I'll make you ruler of all my goods. Now, folks, when God says, I'm going to make you ruler over all my goods, all the wealth the Father's given me, I'm going to make you ruler over all of that. He's saying that to parents. Then you better believe that he's trying to say something awful powerful to us. If you will not give in to the spirit of this age, you will not let your kids intimidate you. We are letting our kids rule the household. Unlimited access to the internet. Don't ever trust anybody under 16. Oh, I trust my kids. God help you. God help you. We are letting our kids, we say, I don't want to lose my, I have more parents than my, I can't judge my boy and my girl because they'll just yell and scream at me. I'm afraid to leave house and they'll leave home and I'll lose them. Better they leave house. You stand on the word of God said, I'll honor you. We come to a passage of scripture is really convicting me but know this but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delays his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and eat and, and to eat and drink with the drunken now listen folks Luke Luke, Luke makes it very clear that this is the same servant same servant who started out right who, who knew in, in his heart the lord was coming at any moment this was the one who was giving meat in due season. But something happened. It was just a change in his doctrine. It was just a change. One doctrinal truth changed. He said in his heart, the Lord has delayed his coming. He didn't preach it. He didn't go out the street. It was a thought. It was a mindset. Something happened. He's not coming in my time. And now, he is smiting his fellow man. Smiting there, in Greek, is repeated blows. That doesn't mean with the fist. No, he can smite his wife with the slightest provocation with a divorce charge. He can go to work now and he can curse. He can listen to dirty stories. He can smite on the left to lies and try to climb over other people. He can smite anybody living a godly life because it provokes him, because he remembers what he was. He can gossip about preachers. He can gossip about everybody. He can live as he pleases because his Lord is not coming. This is sweeping the country and the world down. A doctor that he's not coming in my time and has created looseness in the church. And no wonder we have such foolishness in the house of God. Such damnable stuff coming into God's house. Because they, and people can live like the devil and say, I'm going to heaven. Because they don't believe Jesus is coming. If you believe Jesus is coming tonight, you wouldn't live like you live now. Nor would I. I can go to churches today, they wouldn't invite me, but should I sneak into one of these churches and stand in a pulpit and just stand as a prophet and preach Jesus is coming? I've done that a few times in my life. I, I, I get up, everybody smile politely, ushers would take me out, and, 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 and everybody would condescend and say, oh no, no, not in my time he's not coming. Do you think Christians would be divorcing? At the slightest provocation, do you, you believe that there would be such wild drinking parties in the house of God? Would you believe now that even in the assemblies of God now, in some sections of Canada, and, and even parts of the United States now, are asking Sunday night service to be turned into dances? Would they be dancing the night away if they knew Jesus was coming? If they really believed he was coming? He said, what's going to happen the moment... You lose this awareness of his coming. Once you allow that thought to grip your heart, you're going to start smiting. In other words, your life is going out of control because there, there's no moral compass now. There's no moral motivation whatsoever, and your life is going to spin out of control. Anything goes. Anything goes. I meet Christians like that. Anything goes. This is the very thing Jesus warned about. You're going to start smiting. 
You will not deal with any jealousies. You will not deal with covetousness, envy. You will not deal with any of these things. Oh, you might, you might still hate murder and drugs and alcohol perhaps, but you're not going to have any control over these because you won't want control. You don't need control. But this idea, the Lord says, you're going to start drinking with the drunken. This prosperity is going to get a hold of your heart. You're going to be so wrapped up making money. You're so wrapped up in the stock market. You're going to be so wrapped up in possessions. If your possessions are laying hold of you, and you sit in the house of God like today, right in the message of the coming of the Lord, you're thinking about that, that car, that, that furniture, that house, and all the things, and it's got a hold of you, consumes you, and it pushes out. And he thought of the coming Lord Jesus Christ. He said, be careful. You wind up drinking with the drunk, and you'll get drunken with furniture, drunken with the things of this life, the building a bank account and all of these things. They're going to grab your heart. And then you, you don't want Jesus to come because you, you, you're so wrapped up. You're so busy doing these things to, to get security. Everybody's looking for security. Everybody. You know, in college campuses, they say almost the majority of those who are graduating want to retire by the time they're 50. They want to be millionaires by the age of 35. What kind of a mindset is that that swept the whole nation? Well, folks, in the middle of all that, the scripture says Jesus is going to come. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some coveted after. They err from the faith. They pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Keep thou this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Not until you love his appearance, the Bible says. Henceforth, there are is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me at that day, but not only to me all, only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul said, I've got a crown waiting for me, because I love his appearing. I'm ready. And he said, not only for me, but for every one of you who love his appearing. Hallelujah. Be patient now. Establish your hearts. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. James 5 v. None of them that look for him shall they appear the second time without sin. Be sure you're not eating and drinking with the drunken. Well, good morning, family of God, pastors, ministers, intercessors, prayer warriors, watchmen and seers all across the nations of the world. You are welcome this morning at the altar of prayer. I am Apostle Anna Edwards. And we are in 21 days of revival and outpouring. And truly, the coming of the Lord is at hand. And so we are looking to the face of God. We are looking and longing for the coming of our great Messiah. Family of God, the signs of the end times are all around us. And the Lord is calling to the global church to wake up and to put our houses in order, to prepare our spirits for the coming of the Lord is at hand. We've got to prepare ourselves. We've got to prepare our families. We've got to prepare our loved ones. For at the end of the day, the only thing that will matter when we stand before the Lord is what 
you have done on the earth for the kingdom of God and for advancing the work of the Lord. And so family of God, this morning, I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to pray. I'm getting ready to pray for us. I'm going to be praying for you, for the churches of our nation, for men and women of God everywhere to wake up. For we are in the last days. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And so the scriptures are quite clear what we were to expect in the last days and what would be upon us. And there is no doubt, family of God, when you look, you just have to look inside of your church. Some of you just have to look in your communities. Some of you just have to look in your cities, in your families, in the, in the circles that you are in, and you will see the signs of the times right there blatantly before your eyes. Men no longer want the truth of God's word. And anyone that stands for truth have become a reproach. We are reproached all the day long for preaching the truth. We have become enemies because we say the truth. And so I want to encourage you, never stop speaking the truth. Never stop heralding the coming of the Lord. Never stop proclaiming that Jesus Christ is coming because I'm telling you, While time remain, men still have a chance to repent and to turn away from wicked ways. But when the time of grace closes, there will be no time left. And so I encourage you, everyone under the sound of my voice, people that will hear the replay and the, the broadcast again, the time of grace is closing. The time of grace is almost over this is the day and this is the hour today if you hear his voice harden not your heart open your heart and allow the Spirit of God to come in and to cleanse and to purge and to deliver you whoever it may be under the sound of my voice Harden not your heart, for the Lord loves you and he desires to transform your life. There is no sin that the Lord cannot deliver you from. There is no chain, there is no bondage, there is no addiction, there is no burden. There is nothing that the Lord cannot deliver you from. When he was nailed to the cross, he took every single one of your, your pain, your shames, your sickness, and he nailed it to the cross. For this reason was the Son of God made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So there is no chain, no bondage that Satan can put on you that the blood of Jesus cannot override. Will you accept Jesus Christ as Lord a total surrender the Lord is calling for a total surrender to men and women sons and daughters everywhere around the nations of the world the Lord is calling for a total surrender it is time 
to surrender it all to the Lord. It's a total surrendering of the mind, the body, the soul. A total surrender. Not having a form of godliness and then denying the power. No, beloved. That would make us religious Pharisees and religious scribes. Where we are proclaiming the gospel, preaching the gospel. But then our body is out of control. No, it has to go hand in hand. A total surrender is what the Lord is asking for this morning. And that is our prayer point on today. Let's begin to ask the Lord for grace as we totally surrender our hearts and our spirits to the Lord. Mighty God, this morning I come before you thanking you for the people of faith and the body of Christ. I thank you for the global church family that is here on today, locking shields in prayer for the next 100 days. I thank you for those that are fasting with us during the 21 days of revival and outpouring. I thank you for the grace that you have placed upon us, that we can gather at the altar of prayer, morning after morning, evening after evening, seeking the face of God, humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God, lifting up holy hands unto you, and asking you, God, to show us your ways, to teach us your ways, to show us, God, any error, any, any stick or stone that may be in us. Lord, I thank you this morning that you are giving us the grace to do self introspection that we will never be caught up in vain glory or religious pride or being puffful or prideful or puffed up mighty God I thank you this morning that you have given us another chance you are giving the body of Christ another chance you are giving sons and daughters another chance that they can come to the altar and kneel and surrender it all and so this morning mighty God we surrender it all the people of God are surrendering it all we surrender our mind we surrender our spirit we surrender our will we surrender our mindsets we surrender our blueprints mighty God every dream we lay it on the altar of prayer this morning the visions we lay it on the altar of prayer everything that you have asked us to do we lay it at your altar of prayer and we access the grace of God God this morning we access grace 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 to live right grace to live purity in purity and in righteousness we accept the grace of God upon our lives upon our families we access grace for our sons and our daughters I access grace this morning for our nieces and nephews our cousins our friends our prayer partners I access the grace of God the pure grace of God that redeems the souls of men mighty God we serve surrender our will our mind our emotions our thoughts we surrender every part of it to your altar of prayer today Lord and Lord even now I thank you God that you are ordering our steps for your word says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and so as long as we surrender our will, our mind, our emotions to you, you are the God that will order our steps. And the ordering of the Lord is never wrong. Your ways are never wrong. Your, your path is never wrong because your path is the righteous path. Your pathway is the path of order. Your pathway is the pathway of decency. Your pathway is the pathway of submission and humility and obedience. You are not a God of disorder. You are not a God of rebelliousness. Your, you are a God of obedience and righteousness, purity, honor, love. Mighty God, this morning I thank you that you are establishing our pathway for 2020. January 2020, the Lord thy God shall enlighten our darkness. The Lord thy God shall remove every hindrance. The Lord is removing every stumbling block. The Lord is breaking the chains and lifting the bondage and breaking the yokes. Lord, I just thank you this morning that you are setting us up for the victory. 
You are establishing us in foundations of righteousness. You are setting us up on foundations of truth. Foundations of truth that our eyes will be open to see. That we will not be deceived. Dear Lord, let us not be deceived in these last days. For so many false prophets have gone out into the world to deceive the, deceive the body of Christ. To hinder the people of God. Heavenly Father, this morning I'm asking you, give your people the eyes of discernment that they will not be deceived. Let us not be deceived by vain glory and by the works of men. Let us not be deceived by the outer works of men, but let us look at the inner heart, mighty God. For Lord, many people are doing things and caught up in works and religious pride. But Lord, you never look at the works. You said, I look at the heart. I look at the agenda of men. I look at the motives of men. Why do you do what you do? That is the God that we serve. A God that does not judge by the seeing of his eyes, nor by the hearing of his ear. But he judges by the motive and the intention of a man's heart. Why do you do what you do? And so, mighty God, this morning, I just say thank you. Thank you, God, for calling us to the altar of prayer for 21 days of fasting. Thank you for the call, God. Thank you for the wooing of your Holy Spirit. And thank you for giving us the grace to obey you. Thank you, mighty God, that we have chosen to surrender it all at the altar of prayer. Thank you, mighty God, that we have chosen to lay it all down at the altar of prayer, to lay our wills down and to pick up the will of Jesus Christ. We lay our wills down. Our we lay it down. We lay down our agendas, our itineraries. We lay it down at the altar of prayer. During this 21 days of fasting and revival, we lay down every work of the hands. We lay it down. And we wait for you. We wait for you, mighty God. Let your presence go ahead of us. Let your presence go before us in 2020. Let your presence navigate our footsteps. Let your presence direct our ways. If your presence does not go with us, we will not go, mighty God. Let your presence go ahead of us. Go before us and show us the way in which we should go. Order our steps, mighty God, for January 2020. Light our pathways, my Lord, that we will walk uh, in your footsteps and we will end in, in the place that you want us. We will begin in the place that you want us to begin. For you are the God that knows the end from the beginning. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You created the end from the beginning. And so you know exactly where we ought to be in this month of January. And so I thank you. Even now I just lift up a special prayer for every intercessor under the sound of my voice. I lift up a prayer for the fivefold ministry, pastors, shepherds that are called to lead the body of Christ. I pray, God, that you would release unto them the spirit of revival. Let every pastor, mighty God, burn with the fire of the Holy One. Let pastors and shepherds burn, God, with the messages of truth. Let sermons, God, not be watered down, mighty God, but let truth be spoken at altars on Saturdays and Sunday mornings. Lord, let fires, the revival fires blaze at the altars of churches in our nation and the nations of the world. Let men and women spend quality time in the secret place and download wisdom from heaven, download truth from heaven, download the mind of Christ so that they can prepare solid food, good food so that they can serve the body of Christ, so that men and women will be strengthened, so that the souls of sons and daughters will grow and develop in the knowledge of God. Heavenly Father, I strengthen pastors right now. I strengthen shepherds right now that their faith will stand up even in times of testing for we have arrived at the last day. The great tribulation is here and mighty God, let not shepherds fall. I pray for shepherds that are failing. I pray for shepherds that are weak in their faith. Strengthen their faith today. I strengthen the faith of pastors. I strengthen the faith of ministers. I strengthen the faith of evangelists. I strengthen their faith today, mighty God. 
that they will not cower with fear, that they will not fail you, that they will not compromise, that they will not pervert the preaching of the gospel, that they will not manipulate, that they will not trade in their birthright. I pray for the for the strengthening of the faith of pastors and shepherds who are called to lead the flock over the finish line, mighty God. I pray against every spirit of immorality in churches. I pray against every spirit of uh, evil and lukewarmness in churches, mighty God. I pray against the spirit of carnality in churches and worldliness, mighty God. Worldliness that have snuck into the churches. Worldliness in the, in the choirs. Worldliness in the musicians. Worldliness in the worshipers. Worldliness in the pews. Worldliness in the altar. Worldliness, mighty God, in the sermons. I pray against that spirit of worldliness. I pray against the spirit of lukewarmness right now. I pray against uh, every contrary spirit, every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in the Lord's holy altar. I pray against that spirit right now. I pray against the spirit of perversion that is trying to come into the churches sent with demonic agents sent on assignment to take out the pastors. Mighty God I pray against the spirit of Jezebel right now working behind the satanic agendas of Satan. Mighty God I pray against that spirit right now. Mighty God I pray against every Every spirit of strife and division God for God you said you hate six things you hate and the seventh is those that sow discord among the brethren I pray against that spirit of discord right now in churches I pray against the spirit of contention and confusion in, in ministerial departments I pray against that spirit of contention in church boards and Christian alliances and worldwide organizations I pray against that spirit of confusion and contention right now in the mighty name of Jesus I pray against that spirit God of of greed and covetousness in the shepherds and in pastors mighty God I pray against that spirit of mammon right now let the spirit of mammon be bound and cast out into the sea in the mighty name of Jesus I pray against that spirit God that spirit of greed that makes men to just want more and more and more of the world I pray against that spirit right now for your word says no man can serve God and mammon at the same time time we've got to choose this day who we shall serve mighty God I pray against the spirit of divorce for Satan have released the spirit of divorce. He is attacking marriages of the clergy. He is attacking marriages of pastors. He is attacking marriages of apostles. He is attacking marriages of bishops, of evangelists. I pray against that spirit of divorce. I pray against that spirit, oh God, of contention in the family home right now. I pray that there would be a revival in marriages. Heal marriages of the land. Heal marriages of the church. Heal marriages of the fivefold ministry. Ministry. Let husbands love their wives once again as Christ loved the church and let wives submit unto their own husbands, building the things of the Lord side by side with their husbands. Mighty God, heal the marriages of the church. Clergy, let not the spirit of divorce enter in. Let not the spirit of uh, vain thoughts, mighty God, and fantasy thoughts enter into the minds of husbands or into the minds of wives. Heal Christian marriages. Heal marriages of the clergy. Heal marriages once again, my God. Heal my God. Let there be healing, O oh Lord, in the land once again. Heal, mighty God. Lord, I pray against the spirit of rebel rousing in our young people, mighty God. I pray for a total surrender in the youth of our nation and the nations of the world. Yet, let young people repent and return to the altars with weeping and fasting and praying. I pray, mighty God, against every spirit of confusion, rebel rousing, uh, rebelliousness, mighty God. Let the young people of our nation understand the times, give them dreams and 
visions, wake them up, give them an awakening, stir them in the middle of the night, shake them, mighty God, and let them understand how close we are to the coming of the Messiah. Let our young people be ignited with the fires of revival once again. Let the fires of revival break forth in the street corners. Let the fires of revival break forth in universities, in colleges, in private schools, in secondary schools. Let revival fires break forth on the street corners, in the buses, in the maxis, in the taxis. Let revival fires break forth on the prostitute rings, in the drug dens. I pray that revival fires will just begin to blaze, mighty God, through the city streets, on the highways, on the byways. Oh, mighty God, let revival fire blaze in every church, my God. Wake up your people. Wake up the nation. Wake up the church. Wake up the fivefold ministry and let the fire of revival blaze in our nation once more I pray God for the evangelistic anointing to be released in churches and cities and nations God let great evangelists rise up in the spirit of Reynard Bunky once again and begin to win souls for the glory of God I pray for the level of worship to increase in the nation, God, and in churches everywhere. That men and women would worship every day, God. They would lift up voices of worship. They would lift up holy hands unto the Lord and worship will arise. Let the songs of Zion be sung and played in groceries and supermarkets and pharmacies and the hospitals and healthcare centers. Let the sound of Zion, God, be sung over congregations. Let the sound of awakening awakening be sound be sung mighty God over churches over meetings over revival houses over houses of prayer let the sound of worship oh God resound to the four corners of the earth that Jesus Christ is coming in the mighty name of Jesus pure worship God Pure worship, mighty God. We need worshipers who would kneel at the altar and spend time in the presence of God and come back with the revival fires in their soul, singing the songs of awakening over the nations, singing the song of Moses over congregations to break the shackles, to break the yokes, to break the strongholds, to set the captives free, mighty God. Let the level of worship arise in our nation. Let worshipers arise. Let Judah go ahead of us, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let revival fires blaze, God. Let revival fires blaze in the churches of our land and in the churches of the nations of the world. Blaze, mighty God. Let revival fires blaze in our nations once again, mighty God. Let men and women everywhere be awakened to the sound of revival. In the mighty name of Jesus the Messiah, I seal every prayer under the precious blood of Jesus, and I call it done. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen and amen. Well, family of God, I'm getting ready to bring us down to the end. We're coming down, and we just want to begin to decree and declare over our nation and over the nations of the world. Let us just begin to declare revival. Begin to declare revival. Wherever the Lord lays on your heart for revival to break out. Let us begin to declare revival in the governments. Revival in the social services. Let's begin to declare revival in the hospitals. Revival in churches. Revival in community centers. Let us begin to declare revival in the preaching of the word on Sunday mornings and on Saturdays. Let's begin to declare revival. The word of God says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. The word of God says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. Let us begin to decree and establish revival. We are driving in the stakes. You declare this morning as the Lord lays on your heart. Where you want to see revival, break forth. We need revival. Revival in, in jobs, revival in the secular uh, businesses, revival in our industrial estates. Let revival break forth in Point Lisa's industrial estate. Let revival break forth in Trin City industrial estate. 
Let revival break forth in La Labre Industrial Estate. Revival, mighty God. Let revival break forth in the gas industry. Revival in the oil field industry. Revival, mighty God. Let revival break forth in the Nurses Association. That's right. I see your cry for revival this morning. Revival fires is blazing. It's a total surrender to the Lord. It's a total surrender. Matthew 6 and 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in the heavens. And so we are loosing revival this morning. We are loosing revival. We are releasing revival. That's right, in the malls. We loose revival in Gulf City Mall. We loose revival in Trin City Mall. We loose revival in South Park. We loose revival in C3 Mall, San Fernando. Oh, ancient of days, we loose revival in our nation. West Mall, we release revival in, that, in the malls of our nation and in the malls, the shopping malls of the world. We release revival in the media houses of Trinidad and Tobago that they would report the truth in their stories. They would print the truth in their print media. We loose revival in CNC Trees TV station. I loose revival in the Guardian newspapers of our nation. In the Express newspapers, I loose revival right now. I release revival, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I release revival in the nation. TV6, I loose revival right now. In the TTT television studio, I loose revival right now. Revival in the morning editions, in the morning program, the 6 a.m. programs. I loose revival right now. Revival in our nation, from the north to the south, to the east, to the west. That's right, family. Revival in the nations of the world. Let's begin to lose revival in the nations. I release revival in Aruba right now, in Antigua, in Barbados, in Bahamas. I release revival to the four corners of the world. I release revival in the British Virgin Islands right now. In Curaçao, in Dominica, in Martinique, in Grenada, in Jamaica, I release revival over the nations of the world. Revival in Montserrat, revival in St. Kitts and Nevis, I release revival right now, mighty God. Revival fires are blazing. Revival fires are blazing in these nations. I release revival fires. Let's begin to blaze the revival fires, Global Church. I lose revival fires in St. Lucia right now, St. Martin, St. Martin. I release revival fires right now. St. Vincent, Turks and Caicos Islands, in the Cayman Islands, I lose revival in Trinidad and Tobago. I lose revival right now. I release revival, mighty God. You said whatever I loose on the earth is loosed in the heavens. And so I just lose revival right now. Let revival fires be loosed. Let revival fires be loosed in the nations of the world. Revival fires are blazing in our nations right now. Revival fires in the four corners of the world. Revival fires are blazing throughout the nations of the world. Let revival fires blaze, mighty God. Blaze, God. Blaze in our nation, my God. Revival fires are blazing in the seven continents of the nations of the world, let revival fires blaze in the mighty name of Yeshua. Blaze, mighty God. And now we begin to release mercy and truth. For by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And so right now, let's begin to release mercy and truth. We release mercy and truth throughout the nations of the world. Let mercy and truth be released to the four corners of Trinidad and Tobago. Mercy and truth, for by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. 
Men do not only need the mercy of God, they need the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And so I just release mercy and truth. Let mercy and truth enter into churches, into congregations, into families, into the clergy. Let mercy and truth enter into the homes of pastors, the homes of apostles, the homes of teachers, evangelists, re prophets. Let mercy and truth enter in right now. Mercy and truth. Mercy and truth to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. Let mercy and truth begin to be released in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, mercy and truth. Philippians 2 and 16 says, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither have I labored in vain. And so this morning we are releasing strength, strength for the race ahead, strength so that you can run the race that is set before you. And so right now I just release strength, strength and precision in running the race that is set before us. I speak strength and precision for you in January 2020, that you will not miss your footing, that you will not be pulled out of your path, that you will not come off of the narrow road. I release strength and precision, strength and precision for running the race that is set before you. I release strength and precision to you right now. Your foot will not step, go, will not be in, ensnared. Your foot will not be entangled. Your foot will not be caught in the trap of the enemy. Strength and precision for running the race that is set before you. Receive the strength and precision of the Lord this morning. Strength and precision, you need precision. You need to be cutting with precision in this 2020. Strength and precision be released unto you. You will not miss your path. You will not miss your destiny. You will not miss the work of the Lord. You will not miss. You will not miss. You will be a sharp shooter. Strength and precision for the race ahead. You will not miss. You will not be running the wrong race. You will not be running in flesh, but in the spirit of the Lord, you will run the race that is set before you. Strength and precision, strength and precision. You will not be easily fooled. You will not be sidetracked. You will not come off of the path that is set before you. It is a path of righteousness. It is a path of purity. It is a path of humility and obedience to the Lord. I declare you to be a sharp shooter in the realms of the spirit. You will not miss the target of the Lord. You are a sharp shooter. You will not waste your weaponry. You will not waste your ammunition. You will not fight the petty battles. But you will be a sharp shooter. Your strength will be reserved for the day of battle. You will not fight petty battles. You will not fight anything that is not concerning your assignment. Your eyes are fixed on the Lord. I declare you a sharp shooter. Let the sharp shooter's anointing come upon you today. You are a sharp shooter in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not miss your target. You will not be sidetracked. The contrary winds that are blowing will not cause you to take your eyes off of Jesus. You will not be sidetracked. You are a sharp shooter. You are shooting with precision and with clarity. You will not waste your energy. You will not waste your weaponry. You will not waste your strength. Your strength is being reserved for the day of battle that the Lord will call you to. For the great day of the Lord is at hand. 
We are holding fast to the word of God. We are sharpshooters. And our focus is on the race that is set before us. We do not have time for contrary winds of doctrine. We do not have time for the distractions of the enemy. We do not have time. We are keeping our focus on the Lord. For there is a race that is set before us that we must run. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not waste. You will not waste your weaponries. You will not waste the strength that the Lord is giving to you. You will not be caught up in the petty affairs of life. You are focused and you are serious for the things of the Lord. I just declare that over your life. Focus and seriousness for the things of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm getting ready to bring us into a close right now, family of God. I just declare the blessing of the Lord over your life today. I declare peace and shalom over your life. Let us continue in prayer. Let us continue in fasting. And let us continue to keep the fires of revival blazing upon our altars. This is Apostle Anna Edwards bringing us into a close this morning. I want you to have a blessed day. I want you to have a joyful day. And I want you to have a rich and prosperous day today. Share the prayer room and encourage someone's heart this morning. The Lord bless you everyone. Shalom.